When I first came back from Kenya in my first trip in 2006, a lot of my friends were looking through my photographs of children and hearing the stories of the children that I'd met. And they were asking me if my heart had been broken. That must break your heart, yeah. that sort of line. And God was very clear to me and he gave me a very good picture of the fact that it doesn't actually break my heart. Because with a broken heart, what more can you do? I would be sitting on my couch eating ice cream. Yeah. But instead, what I see in Kenya and what our students experience in Kenya is that opportunity of having, having their heart grown. Mm. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Tyndale Show, our first one for Term 3. And uh, today I'm talking with Tammy Garrett. Now, you might go, aha, Phil's going to talk about Japanese, but that's not true, is it, Tammy? No. Um, we're going to talk about Kenya today. And uh, so my first question for you today is, how does that Japanese teacher <laughs> fall passionately in love with Kenya? The reason why I ended up on the trip was I am somebody who does love travel and yep. obviously I've been many times to Japan mm. and Kenya came out of the blue. I grew up in the Barossa, never really had Africa in mind at all. We have Mike and Danny here who started the Kenya trips. Um, in the beginning stages I actually looked after their children when they would go oh, on the really? trips. I made a promise to one of them that um, eventually I would go on the trip um, when it came time for them to be old enough to go on the trip and that happened in 2006 and since then um, I've now been fully immersed into Kenyan culture and Kenyan life yeah. as well. And 11 Kenyan trips later? 11 Kenyan trips, yeah, yeah, with the school and then 14 in total. Wow. Um, Give us a quick overview of, um, I guess, as a, as a traveller uh, going on a school trip, what I could expect going on the, on the Kenya trip. Mike always talks about the fact that our trip to Kenya is not about a holiday and it's not about just an experience. There are aspects of the trip that are a holiday type yep. because, of course, you're not going to go all the way to Kenya and pay thousands in airfares and accommodation to not see any African animals. But the majority of the trip is all about trying to get them to think outside of themselves and thinking about um, their mind being challenged yep. and their mind being challenged about who God is. Obviously, you know, they can see God and how he is amazing as a creator God. And so all those animals and things like that that they see on the trip. But then also I think it goes into looking at God's amazing love for us and how um, when they meet the, the children that we go and help over in Kenya, I think it's seeing that unconditional love that they give us straight away upon mm. first meeting, that teaches them a lot about God's character of love. We, we send the kids over and I'm sure they go over with the whole idea that we're going to bless mm. the people over there mm. and uh, you know if we cumulatively look at how much money we've taken over, it's over half a million dollars over yes. a number of years, which yeah. is mind blowing in itself. Yes. So what are some of the projects that we've done as a team, or you've done as a team, um, over there to, to bless the orphanages? Over the years we go to two homes. We go to Nema <coughs> Children's Home, and that's a smaller home of about 40 children. Mm. Um, they've been affected or uh, infected or affected by the HIV virus. Their HIV children um, were being ostracised at the other schools right. in the community, so they decided to set up their own school, and now they've actually got community members that will come to their school as their school of choice. Yeah. We've had a year eight class in previous years that raised enough money to cement the floor of one of those schools. Uh, we've put in electricity into that school building, but in the home we've done lots of work as well. We've built um, a chicken coop, we've um, put in biogas, that's one of the recent things okay. because uh, Kenyan law has changed the the um, regulations around using charcoal and at testimony we've done lots of things over the years if we go all the way back to some of the beginning trips we built a basketball court we have done lots and lots of paving around the areas to try and keep mud out we've built verandas out the back of the houses so that they can cook outside rather than cooking inside because they're often using um, things like charcoal for their cooking we have this year completely renovated a house. So they've actually got uh, three houses that have about 40 children each. One of them is actually named after Tyndale because yep. some of our money one year actually um, was used to build that particular house. Right. So they named it after our school. Um, and then they have two other places, um, homes for children that are above the age of 18. From a parent point of view, it's a, it's a big financial commitment yes. to send your child over there. As well as that, I would imagine the safety aspect is, is something to consider and, and I know before that's been a, a bit of a sticking point for parents. Mm -hmm. Why as a parent therefore would I go, I'm going to send my child 
on a kid trip. The aspect of wanting your child to see things in our world that it's okay to become angry about. Mm. Um, for our students on the Kenya trip, a lot of them, the thing that they get out of them is a sense of gratitude. Mm. Seeing children that haven't had their own family being able to bring them up and being in a situation where they've come from a traumatic background into a home with the different parents, mm. that really does make our children think, our students think about what can they actually be grateful for. We sing a song called 10,000 Reasons and it's actually really true that if they stop and think about all the things that they've got in their life to be grateful for, there are so many things. We can turn on a tap, there's, there's fresh water. We yeah. can flush the toilet and know that it's going to flush. We know that when we've got something wrong with our health, we can go to a doctor and very easily get that fixed up. Yeah. Just recently on our trip, we have devotions every morning that the group runs, and three of our girls actually did a whole devotion just on that aspect of being grateful for their own parents. Yeah. I like our students not to come back and feel as though their heart has been broken over there. Um, when I first came back from Kenya in my first trip in 2006, a lot of my friends were looking through my photographs of children and hearing the stories of the children that I'd met and they were asking me if my heart had been broken. That must break your heart, yeah. that sort of line. And God was very clear to me and he gave me a very good picture of the fact that it doesn't actually break my heart. Because with a broken heart, what more can you do? I would be sitting on my couch eating ice cream. Yeah. But instead, what I see in Kenya and what our students experience in Kenya is that opportunity of having, having their heart grown. Mm. And so for me, over 14 trips, every trip, my heart is growing each time. And when you have a heart that is growing, a heart that is capable of loving, there's no end to the possibilities of what you can do. And I think that's the biggest message that I'd love our students to have on the trip is have your heart grown because you'll see firsthand the things that you're able to do when you act in love.